Mrs. Prescott. Uh, all right. Uh, next Tuesday night at the Imperial House. Uh, it's a date. Uh, Brad and I'll meet you there. Goodbye. Hi, Joni. <laughs> oh, hello, Bev. Hey, sis, can I borrow your cashmere sweater? I got a date tonight, and I thought maybe... <laughs> Joni, what's the matter? Is something wrong? Plenty. How would you feel if you were Brad's wife and you had a terrible argument with him? Yelling, screaming, calling names. Oh, what names! How can he say such things to me? When did all this happen? It hasn't yet, but it will as soon as Brad gets home. Shorty, I don't understand. Oh, it's very simple, dear. I, I just made a date to go out to dinner with the Prescotts at the Imperial House next Tuesday night. Well, that doesn't sound so terrible. It doesn't? Well, in the first place, Brad can't stand the Prescotts. They bore him to death. In the second place, the Imperial House is formal. Brad hates to dress for dinner. And in the third place, Tuesday night is Brad's bowling night, and he hasn't missed that for three years. But she was, Joni. If you knew all that, why'd you make the date with the Prescotts? Oh, I just couldn't help it, Beverly. They asked us so many times, I finally ran out of excuses. And next Tuesday night was the only night they had open. Gee, how am I going to tell Brad? You know something, Joni? There's no reason why you should worry about telling Brad. Well, Beverly, I just explained to you how Brad feels. Yeah, I know. But it seems to me when two people are married, they have a partnership. You have just as much right to ask Brad to go as he has to object. That's right. Why do I always have to be the one that gives in? Now you're talking. He's just as married to you as you are to him. That's right. Why should I worry how Brad will take it? That's it. You're both equal. Well, sure. I'm an equal. I'm an equal. I'm an equal. I'm a liar. <laughs> Gee, any husband who would argue with a good cook like you, Joni, is crazy. Thanks, Bill. Honey, I'm home. He's here, Bill. He's here. Oh, I'll go out the back way. I'll get the sweater later. No, no, honey, stay here. You can lend me moral support. <laughs> it's all right, but don't let Brad see how upset you are. Your will has to be stronger than his. Yeah, but his won't is much stronger than my will. Well, there you are. I thought maybe you weren't home. No such luck. Hello, oh, dear. How are you, Bab? Fine, Brad. Hello, darling. Oh, uh, uh, Joni, I'm going out for a little while right after dinner. Where? Oh, no place in particular. I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> Brad? Yes, dear. Uh, Brad, dear, I want to ask you something. I mean, I want to tell you something. Yes, what is it? Just want you to know that I made a date to go out to dinner with the Prescotts. Joan, you didn't! Yes, I did, and I don't care what you say, we're going to keep that date. <laughs> all right, dear. No, you can object all you want to, Brad, but I'm a partner, you know. you got to respect my... What'd you say? I said, we'll have dinner with the Prescotts. But uh, it's at the Imperial House. Uh, you'll have to wear your dinner jacket. All right, so uh, I'll wear a dinner jacket. There's more. There is? I made the date for next Tuesday night. Tuesday? Joan, you know that I bowl... Well, I can give up bowling for once. All right, dear, whatever you say. Brad, you're not going to give me an argument? No, dear, anything you want to do is all right with me. <laughs> you were right. It was just a matter of being firm. He saw that I meant business, and he gave in right away. Just like I said he would. That system worked like a charm. Well, why'd he give in so easily? He should have argued with me. Huh? Well, it just isn't natural. He should have argued more. He's acting like a man with a guilty conscience. <laughs> Probationer number 46, are you free to talk? Uh, yes, but, uh, my wife is in the next room. This is a reminder. 
You're due at the headquarters of the lodge tonight. Uh, don't worry, I'll be there. A little more respect, probationer number 46. Remember, you're talking to the exalted, most high and mighty ruler of the loyal and secret order of maskers and frolickers. I'm sorry, exalted leader. This initiation has been rough on me. That's how we keep unworthy ones from becoming members of the loyal order. <laughs> uh, what task of the initiation are you on now? The, uh, the first one. I I've agreed with everything my wife says. And you haven't said no to her? Uh, I've agreed with everything. Good. And you've kept your initiation a secret? Haven't mentioned it to a soul. <laughs> Word of honor. Uh, I'll see you a little later at the lodge, uh, exalted leader. Fred, I, I want to ask you something. Uh, yes, dear, what is it? Did you really mean it when you said we'd have dinner with the Prescotts? Well, I, I said yes, didn't I? <laughs> Can I buy that imported tweed coat I showed you in the window of the parish shop? Now, Joan... Can I? Uh, yes. Can I buy a bag and shoes to match? Now, Joan... Well... Uh, yes. How about a couple of dresses while I'm at it? Yes, yes, the answer is yes to anything you say. Yes, yes, yes! I was right. He must have a guilty conscience or else he wouldn't be so nice to me. Probationer number 46. Do you swear that you have faithfully followed the rules of the first task? Yes, Mr. Talbot, I... Uh, no names. Uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, yes, exalted leader. You've agreed with everything your wife said? Uh, believe me, vice exalted leader. It, it was difficult, but I did. If I wasn't so anxious to join the loyal order, I wouldn't have been able to hold out. Hey, you know, I got an idea. Yes, sub vice exalted leader, what is it? Well, obviously, the probationer is sincere. Perhaps we should go a little easier on him. Would it be in order to let him go to the second task of the initiation? Oh, I'll do anything just so I don't have to agree with everything my wife says. All right, number 46. You may progress to the second task. Oh, that's uh, fine. Thank you, thank you. What is the second task? This time, you will not agree with anything your wife says. You know, the other day I went to a movie and I saw a picture about a fellow who's acting just like Brad. You ought to see it. What was the name? The Bijou. I go there twice a week. <laughs> What was the name of the picture? No, I don't remember. Anyway, this fellow in the picture, Burt Lancaster, he had his wife all puzzled the way he was acting so funny. Why, what was he doing? Well, you see, he fell in the hands of this international spy ring, and then they had some kind of a hold on him, you see, and they were blackmailing him, and they were using him for a respectable front for their spying on this country. And he couldn't tell his wife or even the police because they threatened to kill his father, who was still living in the old country. They had funny little uniforms and a secret handshake, and they called each other by strange names. <laughs> anyway, Joni, Brad's trouble might be the same as that fellow's in the picture. You mean Brad might be involved with some international spies? <laughs> Brad, in the clutches of spies. <laughs> oh, it's utterly ridiculous, Beth. Well, I'm sorry, Joni. I was only trying to help you. I know, honey, but it was such a fantastic idea. Nobody could blackmail Brad about anything. <laughs> Besides, he hasn't got a father in the old country. His father's in Cleveland this very minute. <laughs> I guess you're right. Oh, sure. <laughs> I gotta get rid of this potato peeler. It cuts paring so thick it doesn't leave any potato. <laughs> Mr. Stevens? Yeah? Is your husband home? Well, not yet, but he will be soon. I'll wait. Oh, fine. Uh, oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Uh... Well, my name is Immaterial. Uh, well, won't you sit down, Mr. Immaterial? <laughs> I believe I knew a family in St. Paul named uh, Immaterial. I think they were related to the irrelevance. <laughs> you don't want to tell me your name, huh? Precisely. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. How are you? I got... Uh, Joan, uh, Joan, have you met Mr. Nah, no names. You were almost indiscreet, probationer number 46. Sorry, sir. <laughs> probationer number 46, have you fulfilled assignment number five? 
Yes, exalted leader. Uh, one moment. May I remind the probationer that two's company and three's a crowd. Yeah, come on, Brad. He wants to be alone. Uh, uh, Johnny, Johnny, will you, will you excuse us, please? Sure, sure. Uh, Joan, Joan. I was just leaving, Brad. <laughs> Joan. Beverly, have I got a problem? Well, relax, Joni. Your worries are over. I just found out. How about Brad? No, the name of the picture I was telling you about. It's called Prisoner of the Mind. Oh, well, that solves everything. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. And now, what about Brad? Honey, I'm afraid that you were right. Brad is in the same fix that Burt Lancaster was. He, he, he's in the clutches of spies. Oh, gee. And Brad hasn't got muscles like Burt Lancaster. <laughs> uh, he's in with the ringleader right now. And it's just like you said it was in the movie. They got secret handshakes and no names, just numbers. The whole works. The whole works. You've done very well with task number five. The underside view of the Los Angeles Bridge. Had to hire a rowboat to get that one. <laughs> and the International Airport, taken from 2,000 feet up. That one almost got me killed, leaning out of a helicopter. And they got him working for him, doing all kinds of mysterious things, and who knows what else. There's nothing I hate so much as a spy. I know, Bev, but this is the only way I can see what they're saying. So... You're sure you understand my instructions, number 46? Yes, exalted leader. And you've told nobody, not even your wife. Not even my wife, sir. And you know the penalty for failure to keep our secrets. Yes, exalted leader. Good. The committee will next question you here in your home tomorrow night. But there must be no one here but you. Yes, exalted leader. And be sure to show them these, especially the one of the Los Angeles Bridge. I'm sure they'll want to blow it up. <laughs> You're blow up the Los Angeles Bridge. Johnny, this is awful. If it ever got out that Brown was involved with a gang of spies that steal military secrets and blow up bridges, why, he'd be in terrible trouble. You're not kidding. Why, he could lose his job as municipal court judge. <laughs> but, 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 but why do I have to leave the house, Brad? Because I... Because I... Because. I, I, I can't tell you right now, Joan. Oh, Brad, I'm sure something awful is going on. You can't fool me. Joan, I'm not trying to fool you. Just take my word that there's nothing wrong. In a few days, the whole thing will be over, and I can tell you the whole story. Yeah, in court. And you won't be on the bench, either. Oh, nonsense, Joan. I'm not in any trouble, and I'm going to be in any trouble. So come on. Look, run along and kill an hour somewhere. I know. Uh, go to a movie. Uh, there's one at the Bijou with Burt Lancaster. Not that. Anything but that. Yeah, well, Joan. Honey, uh, uh, take a walk somewhere. Hmm? I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Shampoo, the smiling <laughs> Good evening, exalted leaders. Well, probationer 46 is being a little presumptuous, wearing the mystic chapeau so soon. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. You're sorry what? I mean, I'm sorry, vice exalted leader. That's better. <laughs> You have successfully completed tasks one through five. Yes, exalted leader. And now you are about to embark on the rest of your assignments. Tasks number six through 25. What? Oh, no, 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 I can't. Quit, I'm, uh, I'm backing out. Oh, no, you're not. Nobody backs out, not when they've gone this far. You know too much about the inner workings of our organization. <laughs> Operator, give me the number of the FBI. <laughs> Well, uh, what, what are you, uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> You've just gone through task number six. That was it. Being told there were 25. Actually, there are only seven. <laughs> That's right. They fall for it every time. Oh, well, that is. Oh, well, let's get on with it, shall yeah. we? You fell at that. All right. Hello? Hello, is this the FBI? <laughs> Don't 
shoot. Dora, don't shoot. I, I wasn't calling the FBI. I, I mean, I was. I, I was calling my Uncle Frank. Uh, uh, Frank B. Ingram. Uh, we all call him FBI. And now, probationer number 46, if you successfully accomplish task number seven, you'll become a full-fledged masker and frolicker. Are you ready? I am ready. Proceed. <laughs> Go to Shorwa's lamb. The went married it everywhere. Its snow as white was fleece. Lamb little had Mary. Mary had a little lamb recited back. <laughs> You know, I, I come down three times. Oh, please, please don't shoot. I'm too young to die. Well, I'm only... Well, I'm too young to die. I just can't stand the suspense. If you have to shoot me, go ahead and shoot, but don't torture me. Go ahead and shoot. I can't stand it. Shoot. Go ahead and shoot. Shoot. Ah! Oh, Billy. Billy, run for your life before he shoots you, too. Get out. Get out. Who's worried? I'm not afraid of him. Beverly, you'll get killed. Get out. Get, get, get. Oh, I, I thought it was a gun. I thought it was one of those spies. Spies? They're in there, and they're probably torturing Brad, Bev. They're in... I don't know what to do. And now the solemn moment. The ordeal by fire. Wait a minute, you're not going to brand me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> they do it every time. <laughs> now, you stop worrying. We're not going to brand you, just the headgear. Oh, well, that's a relief. <laughs> you remember Harry? He nearly fainted. Yo, oh, you should. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, gentlemen, the mystic chapeau. <laughs> and with this mystic brand, which no outsider has ever seen or touched, we will inscribe on the mystic chapeau in letters of fire the sacred symbols of our order. Now the time has come to light the ceremonial torch with which to heat the ceremonial iron. Vice exalted leader. Yes, exalted leader. The ceremonial match. Have you got a match? <laughs> oh, have you got a match? There's some in the kitchen. Vice exalted leader. Yes, exalted leader. Get some matches. One of them's coming in the kitchen. Oh, if I only had a gun. You thought that broom was a gun? Yeah, quick hide. Stick him up. What? <laughs> this is a gun. Okay, okay, don't, don't, don't shoot. You deserve to be shot, you filthy spy. What? Ah, uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Well, probationer number 46, soon you will be masker and frolicker number 46. When the final rite is completed. Where are the matches, uh, vice exalted leader? The matches? What for? To heat the branding iron. Oh, matches to heat the branding <laughs> Bev, they're going to brand brand. They're, they're going to brand brand. Oh, you, you, you don't understand. I, I, they're old shoes. They got a red hot poker and they're going to burn. Uh, but I ain't going to let them. I got to get the matches. They got to eat the brandy. <laughs> now, vice exalted leader, strike the match and kindle the ritual flame. <laughs> This is the mystic rite of fire, the purification by flame, the last and final ordeal in the cabalistic arcana of our loyal and secret order. Don't you move. And now the mystic occult symbols of the secret order shall be imprinted on the probationers. You're not going to brand him. Hey, you spy. Look who's calling him. Here, you'll never find it in here. Oh, 
cut it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just don't shoot. No, Joni, Joni, those men are not spies. They're not. No, they're the initiation committee from the maskers and frolickers. They were giving me the ritual. Well, I thought... And that branding iron's a symbol of membership. Now, get those men out of here, dear. Yes, dear, anything you say, I... Ah! <laughs> what happened? Shake hands with the newest member of the maskers and frolickers. <laughs> We've just been initiated. Oh. 